So in this video here, it's 14th of September, I'm basically going over many trades that I had in this day uh, for in the initial balance. It's approximately for first hour of trading on the 14th of September here. Uh, I traded all, all pretty much all of the funded accounts. I have notes on each trade, so you'll be able to see uh, approximately how much was made and lost on each trade. I had a couple of good winners, a couple of scratches, uh, some bad trades that I managed poorly. Um, I had uh, the earn to trade gauntlet that I was also trading. So I was really trading all of my accounts this day. Uh, mainly what I'm looking here is I'm looking for the momentum between the two markets, the correlation between NASDAQ and ES. Also on the tape, you see where buyers and sellers are agreeing to trade and I'm willing to see how the momentum picks up from there. So there's generally one market that's actually leading compared to the other one. I did trade a bit of NASDAQ, a bit of ES, depending on how the volatility was that this day. It was pretty good volatility in, in this week because we had, you know, a, a big drop in the markets. So if you were, if you really pay attention to the, the domes that I have, you could see that uh, I'm looking for where buyers and sellers are agreeing. That's kind of my view of the instant immediate value on the tape. Uh, I'll have a couple of losers too, and you'll see how I try to scratch uh, the trade immediately. I'm like I said, no, nothing's perfect, but the way I see things is if it if the market gets into a chop, I generally just want to get out. I'm not willing to look into see if let's see if I I mean in a general manner I'm trying to get get out and scratch it as quickly as possible. If I can take a small loss, I'll take it. Uh, I have a couple of losers too. So look, I mean, it's never perfect because sometimes the market will just kind of like take you out. But that's the kind of thing where, uh, call it randomness if you want, but it's how the market functions where you need to trap one way or another. And you can't always be on the right side of each trade. Sometimes you'll be on the right direction and you'll have no trade, which is exactly what I have here. Uh, I'm guessing that I know the direction of where sh if I should be shorting or buying and I actually have notes on, on the video you'll see there. Well, you just can't catch all of them, right? So the purpose here is to really be able to really like, immediately know which direction should I be trading and where the pressure is. And if I see one market that's leading the compared to the other, I'll try to, I'll try to trade the lagging one. In most cases, it, cases this day it was ES that was lagging but NASDAQ did had some good scalps so I did do some nice scalps around it and I mean if you see a NASDAQ that's dropping very like with strong momentum that's basically going to affect ES wanted, wanted or not and the thing here is to see how my orders on ES if I should be putting them like a bit more tight so sometimes I'll hit the market with let's say one short and then I'll I'll see if NASDAQ continues and if that volume still picks up on ES, I'll probably try to add to it because my my overall way of trading, I'll try to get three to five lots so that I can get a decent move. But if I see that at some point the move kind of like stags and it doesn't really go anywhere, I'll, tra I'll take one or two off and perhaps have the idea of selling it a bit higher or, you know, basically buying it a bit lower, right? But again, it's all about if NASDAQ's kind of done its big move, it's probably going to come back up a good chunk of points and that's probably gonna lead the ES higher as well. So that's where I kind of have to interpret if I wanna continue with that same buyer, so I just scratch this trade because normally speaking, if, I, if you're a kind of a scalper, scalpish idea, the mindset here, you're, you're not willing to always make 500 or $800 trades and you're not taking one or two tick scalps either. That's not the purpose of all this. It's really to be able to monitor how both markets are kind of correlated well together. And if they're not correlated, I'll just go like one, one direction with the same instrument and try not to really, because some days they're not very well correlated, but I, I'd say 80 to 90% of days, it's pretty clear. So what I'm doing here is I'm seeing one market that moves and then I'll see if on ES's depth of market, we're able to, if on S&P, we're able to get uh, some kind of clues from the, uh, the dome where you'll see like a real order. You'll see um, uh, a trader that 
or an institution or who, whoever it is, right? Or, or an algo, right? That they're basically reloading and you see this very clearly that there's one-sided momentum on the on the dome, right? So the, again, you'll have a point, a period where you'll, you'll see all of us reloading, you'll see the stacking on the dome and then all of a sudden it's just gonna come back like a, a six to eight ticks. That's just because one, you know, big order hit the tape or whatever. And there will be cases where you'll see the large and mid-sized tape really affect ES and it was very clear. So hope this kind of explanation here in the beginning kind of helps because I couldn't really like always comment on each trade. So I took some notes on it. I'll, I put it on the video, but having the, these explanations at the beginning kind of definitely kind of gives you a uh, an idea of how I trade and I'm looking for momentum. If one side is directional, I'll try to keep that momentum there. And then I'm seeing how the mid size and the large size tape, are they really affecting or are they just getting absorbed, right? So that, that that's the key here where you wanna see if there's really like a liquidity taking market where there's a lot of market, a lot of volume that's coming in. Is that really moving the market, right? Is that having an effect on the tape? And if it is, it's just basically good momentum to trade. But sometimes, you know, uh, especially knowing the character of the markets here uh, around the 14th, it was close to OPEX, it was close to, you know, options expiry. You know that you'll have a lot of two-sided action where you'll, you'll have like four or five points to one side and then you'll probably get at least a pullback. So I was trying to avoid being in that pullback, you know? So if I have a bias of going short and then I see like a four to five point pullback here on ES or even on NASDAQ, I'm trying to avoid, I'm trying to avoid that pullback so that I don't have a short position to really have to monitor and let it like kind of go against me a bit. So I'll let, I'll let the market kind of do its pullback. And if I was in, in that trade, I'll try to scratch it and perhaps see how the market trades a bit higher, you understand? So when you're trading OPEX or near options expiries, the first mindset is where, yes, you might have like directional moves, but those directional moves, if you're especially trading on a dome, you get a lot of good pullbacks. You don't have to take the pullback. So you're gonna expect that pullback to occur and then look to see if you can kind of get the short or the long bias trade that you were looking for, you understand? So that's the kind of thing I was doing this day and it worked perfectly. I mean, this week, I think I had one or good day, one or two days where I traded pretty pretty heavily and then uh, all the rest, I basically didn't trade a lot because especially with OPEX and options expiry, I try just to be a bit, you know, uh, on the sidelines, not, not really avoiding those days because there are great days where you'll have good momentum because I did trade on the 14th. I missed the 15th of September, but then I got the 16th of September. I also posted that um, on Twitter as well. So I'll try to see if I can maybe have a video of the 16th as well because I had some decent trades, uh, scalps on the 16th. But this is really the 14th of September. Hope this helps and please do comment. I... Uh, like I said, I really put out all these videos just to really get, you know, uh, a certain number of videos out there. And I think uh, you guys should be, I mean, from, from the feedback I'm getting, you guys seems to be, seem to repeat. You guys have to really just look at each time timestamp and go, go through each trade. Hopefully this helps.
Thank you. 